Hi, this is uh, Elliot Wave Sage. I'd like to do a quick um, weekend update. And like always, none of this is financial advice. Always do what's best for you. Use this for your education and entertainment purposes only. Uh, so Friday was really um, uh, a crazy day, a lot of uh, fear. And like I read um, and heard uh, someone else um, say that I follow, fear of missing out, actually. That was the fear driving the market. So it was, a, it was a crash upward as investors are afraid of missing the move and they need to get long at any price. Get long and, and, and go. Now, how long can uh, parabolic moves happen? Uh, they can keep going, right? They don't, they don't end until they end, right? But they do end in tragedy. They don't go to infinity. So it will end in uh, tears for many people. Um, trying to predict that turning point is always uh, extremely difficult, but extremely lucrative if you're um, just lucky enough as if you were if you were long. Uh, so uh, we'll look at the tech sector in a minute. But I believe, you know, if you look at where we are in the market overall, again, we're in this corrective structure where you have this ABC move down. For W and now we're in a connector wave okay and we've talked about the connector wave can go on for 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 years years um, or in some cases like the XLE a decade before you finally get capitulation so could this go on for the next seven years like up and down up and down it, it might who knows uh, I don't think it will I think the market um, the moves happen a lot faster especially in these indices. But I do think uh, th this uh, sequence uh, is coming to an end soon. But if you really look, you know, you have five up here, down, five up, down, five up. And now you're in this little connector. See that little connector? Now look at this B. You see, it kind of it kind of lasted a little bit longer. So I still think we're in B. I still think we're in B. I think even despite the pump yesterday, I just think it's part of sideways act price action noise. And I still would would like to see um, a move down to finish B and then get C. Now that's what I, that's what I'd be looking looking for. Now, uh, could it be done here like that? Probably not, right? And we're about to break it. What if, what if it just breaks open? Well then. You have to trade the count, so the count would be a one. This would be um, some kind of one, two, three, four, five, and we'll finish up. Uh, where would where could we finish if that's the count? Again, this is the more bullish. This is be like we continue the pump. Uh, four twenty six, four thirty. So right again, I, you know, I always had the four twenty five as my target. So so the, if we continue the pump, this is kind of the area I would be looking for the the pump to end. The Y to end if we do uh, uh, start moving uh, higher, and and this was just a shallow um, B connector, but again I still wouldn't be surprised to see this and see that later, you know, and then we, then we get this later in the SPY, and then here you you have essentially uh, some three wave moves right an A and a B and a C for three, an A. B and a C for three more, then an A and a B and a C for another three. This is what I'm thinking, something like that, and then this uh, this pattern becomes, you know, a bigger uh, expanded uh, flat type pattern within the B connector. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. So I'm still thinking this. Uh, but I do know, respect that it could be done and we could still go a little bit higher. Uh, we still have this divergence. So if we're going to go higher, it will need to race that divergence and push through it. So we're going to, you know, it'll be interesting to see where this spy goes. But I think, I think this is not practical, but technically could still be done. But I think it's, I think this is probably the more likely uh, path, something like this for the SPY. Now the Dow uh, started bouncing here. Uh, for right now, 
you have A, B, C for W, X, and then A, and now this B should be over as it back tests this down tr this trend line. It was finding resistance and we get C. And then we get a much larger bounce, you know, later. It, and it could even, you know, go, it could do that, who knows, but it then, and then this comes comes later, something like that. That's what I'm thinking for the Dow. So we'll see if this plays out. Now, if this is done here, then that means we're already in this bounce. We're already in this bounce. Uh, and then and then we'll need to, 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 to reassess things. But I, I'm not ready to say that because we really haven't broke the, uh, the, this trend line yet. So not yet. Um, and really the weekly is about to have it break, break here. That's the bottom here. See the bottom, the bottom. If that weekly breaks, then the Dow may be the first indice to start to um, head toward the October lows. Uh, um, af, you know, as the Russell, as it probably will break, probably go Russell, Dow, then SPY tech last. More than likely, it's the sequence. We'll see, but we'll we'll wait. But I do think this is kind of what I'm looking at right now. Something like this. If this is the case, we should see a lot of selling in the next couple weeks here. If this is right, or next week, uh, and then and then a nice relief rally for something, you know, wipe out. Now, if we're already bouncing in this connector, and then this is already uh, finished here, then uh, we may finish this sequence next week. This could finish next week. You can put W there, get X, and get another Y. And then we get this in June, so I don't know yet where where we where we are, but I think it's something something like this for now. All right, now technology. I you know I showed this fifth wave. We were going to be in it. Uh, it obviously um, really uh, messed some people up trying to short this. I uh, and I really like I said my short area. I I did lower the target from 44. I had it at 350. Uh, so maybe keeping it there would have been the right move after all, but we still didn't get to 350. We got to 349.38. Uh, I do believe um, we're getting close. This should should be finishing. Uh, you know, it could be a throw over top on the wedge uh, here. Uh, a wedge. You know, we had this upward wedge. It could be a throw over top uh, that will reverse. Uh, so again, you have this bearish divergence on the four hour still. The daily erased it, which would be expected on the uh, on the third swing higher. The four hour shows the individual impulse is still fifth wave on the lower time frame. The 45 minute still shows divergence too. So uh, it's still showing an impulse. If we were to erase that divergence on the 45 minute, uh, then technology would extend higher. I would not recommend shorting and the targets would go, go up. Then this would become a one, two, one, two, three of three, and we would get to these 368 targets up in this area. But until until that is erased, and we just just couldn't do it, we tried, just couldn't do it. We'll see what if we get follow through on Monday. I'm sorry, Tuesday. We'll see, but um, that's that's what it's looking like to me uh, at the moment. Um, the very you know short time frames, five minutes, you know, massive bearish divergence. And the 15 minute uh, does show bearish divergence a little bit starting. So it does look like a pullback will happen early in the week. Uh, we should at least come back to the wave four low. Uh, but but again, no one knows for sure how this will play out. Uh, one of the things, you know, I was uh, reading, this is a 618 retrace. You know, it doesn't really mean much, but it's interesting uh, from an area of support. This line at 356 is major support, which would be major resistance. As you can see here, support, 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 support. And then I found, um, start, tried to break through, found resistance. So this, this area in here is definitely going to be uh, very difficult to get through if it can make it up to this area. In this area, it will be very difficult to get through this on the first pass. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens uh, if it can make it up there. 
Um, one of the other interesting things is the Bollinger Bands, and I don't really look at these too much except for um, um, blow off top type moves, uh, just to give an idea where where things are. Um, so let's look at the Bollinger Bands on on this to show how how screwed you know how screwed up this move is compared to historical norms. So let's go to a chart that I don't have marked up that much, so we could see it. Um, so this is this Bollinger Band. We'll just remove all the drawings. So I'm looking at the weekly Bollinger Band. I believe we closed outside of it. As you can see, we closed outside of it. The last time that happened was right here before we had a, 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 a pivot. You see, we closed here, you know, and, and, we, and that signaled a reversal. Uh, a weekly Bollinger Band up here, we closed out of it for several weeks, four weeks. And then that marked the top for the massive downturn. As you can see here, you didn't really come through. You came through here again, and then you had an immediate drop, crash drop right away, flush. Here you poke through, and that started the March 2020 crash. Um, again, here you had it in uh, March 18, and that started the bear market in tech until uh, April. Here you had it again, January 18, vol um, the Volmageddon broke out, crash. So, so everywhere we see, here's another one, July 15th and a massive crash. So every time the weekly breaks out of the Bollinger Band, I mean, it doesn't just keep going up, guys. I mean, that would be way outside of um, norm, right? It doesn't just go like, we don't see that, right? It's not like a crypto, you know, it usually this is stock. So usually it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Now you can get a couple weeks, look like one, two, one, or even up here in this final top, you had four, one, two, three, four week. So, I mean, it could stay some, you know, it could hang out here for a while, a couple more weeks. Uh, here you had uh, a couple weeks here, right? One, two, three, making lower highs each week, a lot of volatility. So. It may not just crash, but but I don't, you don't what you don't typically see is it continuing to rise. And if you do, uh, like you saw here, you saw actually another another high and another high. This is where it would be good to build the short positions slowly and just kind of accumulate slowly a short position in the market as these make it. So you don't go in with your whole stack short on anything. You can't do that. You have to, you know, keep an open mind. So here, so perhaps we can go to 352, 357, three, you know, 358. Just, just, keep, but eventually, time, time, time runs out. Time runs out. So, um, but let's keep going, right? I mean, I was just kind of curious. Is again, this is the weekly Bollinger Band. Um, again, you don't see it at all here. Here you see a little bit of it right around before the historical drop here in 2008, right? This marked the top and then it that was the end. Poked out here, crash. Poked out here, massive decline. Poked out here, zigzag down. Uh, and again, the, the dot-com bubble, of course, the dot-com bubble. Now, this one's interesting. Poked out, crashed. Here, kind of, I won't call that coming out. Now, look, you come, you come out here, and it just kind of rides up. And imagine trying to short this. Now, this was a blow off top of the ages. And then you finally got it so this this is a, a rare situation now could we be going into you know something like this if we see this from you know November to March if you were trading this the breadth within technology altogether was pretty strong for the blow off not all sectors did this but it wasn't just a few stocks now I think this part of the uh, blow off top was just a few stocks but this part was, I think, broad participation. We're not seeing that. So until, if we could see that, 
if we start seeing other stocks, you know, really start to take off, and of course it will go to, you know, the Teslas, the Microsoft, the Googles, the Amazons, then, then, then it will trickle down to the trade desks and, and the others, and then eventually, you know, the smaller ones, Snapchats, and, and then, and then, then you could get this, and then, 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 then you gotta um, be really careful. But uh, it's not, not likely. Uh, so let's look at the monthly Bollinger Bands and see um, see if there's anything we can learn here. Again, outside of it there. Again, every time you've been outside, now that's a huge uh, pump outside the monthly. Here, we're not, we have, we're not near the monthly uh, Bollinger. Daily, even the daily, we're outside of it. Again, signaling a reversal. So if this is going to be a blow off top, like something like, you know, some something like you get this and then it just, you know, does that and then crashes down later. Uh, so what are we looking for uh, to have that happen? We need to see breath, breath in the market uh, with other stocks doing the same thing, busting out. It can't just, semiconductors just can't do it. And I don't believe the market is set up for that. So I do think... Uh, we'll keep an eye on this, but this is ready to, to reverse, in my opinion, and the odds say uh, it, it will, um, but do what's best for you. But, I mean, like I said, the, the historic Bollinger Band back here, uh, you know, shows you it can still stay outside of the Bollinger Band week after week after week, you know, for, for 12, almost a year, you can get this kind of um, price action here okay uh, so just um, just understand that you never know uh, what the market's gonna do but this and then th in the context this was this was not coming off of a correction right this was this was coming off of a massive uh, low that kind of parabolic up here you're in this type of uh, situation a connector wave still with really, you never even really got capitulation in the mega cap stocks. So we'll see uh, what would happen. But yeah, I mean, right now it does show that the um, the chart of the queues, I have not tried to short until Friday. So Friday I started and we'll continue to be patient and build this position for the weeks to come and then decide what to do after that. Uh, if divergence is erased, then as soon as we pull back, I'll be looking to leave the short positions. We'll pull back. Uh, so, so if we do erase the divergence, then uh, it negates this count, uh, whether I think it should or not. So, but this is finally the area of the SPY. I'm not interested until we're up in this area. Um, the IWM has been pretty weak. Now this looks like three down, three up. It could, like I said, it could still be in a, a two wave connector and get up to this 184. Uh, so we'll, you know, we'll see what happens on um, on uh, on next week. The other the other alternative is it's one, two, and you see an A B C like that. So that's the other alternative. Um, let's look at the futures. Uh, let's see if uh, these give you anything. Again, three, you know, three, three. What well, I think it needs one more swing down to finish its first uh, series before bigger bounce. The ES uh, still could be in this um, consolidation wave. Again, three waves down here, three up. So just a mess. Nasdaq hit the short area uh, that I had. And um, sh showing divergence there and there. And at the 15. So again, just um, defying reality. And if again, if you look at this wedge, it could be a throw over blow off top, you know, It'll be interesting to see if if we open on uh, Monday or we open down here inside the wedge again, 
or come right down into it. I think that would be very bearish. Uh, this would be a, a, a wave five throw over and then, and then uh, we could get a wedge crash later, a wedge crash. Um, the Russell is a little different structure. Again, it could still go up a little higher, but I think, I think it's ready to do something like this. Hong Seng shows you're going to go lower. Dollar will go higher. Bitcoin, weak, right? Weak for, for all the excitement. I do believe it's going to go lower. Oil could, uh, you know, oil could still be in this two wave for now. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, if it is, then uh, this is just a one, two, and we'll get a massive squeeze in oil, something like that. So tough to say at the moment. But it does look incomplete, right? So it does look like it wants to go higher. Gold's in an area that um, this could be a flat where we're coming out of. This could be bearish for the market. Seems like gold's been going up. The market goes down. Silver, again, looks like it's done its flat. It's starting to rebound. Uh, some people ask me about natural gas, so I still have it as this one, two. Still looking for lower to break this low. Looking for the bottom area here in the shaded area. Um, Boyle looks like to me uh, it's in an end in um, uh, megaphone pattern um, uh, uh, here. A, B, C, D. It looks like uh, 235, somewhere down in this area to finish the megaphone pattern. And then you could get a reversal out. Uh, if we break down, it would be uh, very bearish because it would be a continuation pattern. And then uh, this distance, uh, it would reverse split. So just be careful if you're in it that this is the megaphone. Look, so perhaps there's your bottom. And I do think it's going lower, boil, and natural gas in this sequence. Because it tends to follow oil, and that oil will go lower. And once this sequence is finished, oil will go lower, and I believe it will take natural gas with it in all commodities. Deflationary panic. The one year is continuing to surge. It broke this high, so it is now set up this move higher uh, to much higher unthinkable interest rates, 8.5%. Uh, let's take a look. Let's try to get a conservative target, uh, just just a conservative target. And again, my system could be wrong. Do what's best for you. Okay, nine percent. Yeah, so eight, nine percent, one year. There's no way the stock market will be uh, um, the recognizable if this happens. You won't recognize the market. You'll be unrecognizable if you can get a nine year, one year. And, not, and imagine what the banks. The money market funds, I mean, but that's what this is telling us. I mean, again, you may you may not want to believe it, but look, I mean, this is clearly an impulse up. You clearly had a correction against that impulse in an expanded flat. You've moved up in one, two, and now you're coming out in three. You made new highs. The odds of this going back down is very slim right now. So that's why I'm saying if you're long bonds, you need to be really careful. And I'm not taking that trade. I'm not going to take that long bond train on any duration with this kind of backdrop. So this is this telling us that we're going to default. The market may already have sensed not only are we going to default, maybe we'll miss our payment on our bonds. The unthinkable. Now that would uh, that would definitely be a typical fourth turn in generational crisis type event. That would definitely uh, throw us into that um, era. But I'm just, you know, I look at this. And there's nothing good about this chart other than, you know, if you're, if you're going to go onto the sidelines with your cash or, or go into the, I mean, this is, this is going higher. And it's not a four wave. It's not a four. Look, it's a, it's it's a clearly a correction against this cycle. It should have uh, went down deeper. It didn't. People are panicking already. That's what's happening. No one's talking about the one year. So given that, uh, here we are in B, and we keep going higher and higher. I think 
we may have to come to to uh, the, the realization that this two is in uh, here or it's um, or it's just similar to the two year where that's one and we have to make some adjustments to the count which which it can be done just like I have here and and then we're done the two here so again this this would uh totally full traders right no one's predicting this there's no one predicting this but Elliott wave sage right now it's telling you we could be about to see rates explode to the upside so this would get us let's see again what's the target for the two year uh, eight eight point four eight 8.48 so about 8% it's looking that way 10 year I still have it like this but like I said you break the downtrend line uh, that changes everything that 4 is done we're in 5 we'll go to 5 over 5 30 year um, if we break this high this pivot at 4 then um, it will take another swing up. It will probably retest this high at 4.4. And then you have to start thinking that this was done here. And again, we're going to go to five, over 5% 5 on the 30 year. We've already seen it on mortgage rates. You know, mortgage rates, I was looking for the second swing down. We may not get it. Uh, I was hoping to get this and hope this would help housing in the summer. Uh, but it may not. It may be, again, rates, it may be already, we may already be starting the sequence higher. And then this would get interest rates to 10% on your mortgage. Uh, yikes. Again, I'm still, but if we break that peak, at, um, which I think we've already done that. So I think I think it's safe to say that this this is already in, uh, in the swing higher. That's not going to happen. And again, we have five up, a connector, and we need another sequence higher. So where would our mortgage rates go from here? Uh, ten and a half percent. What do you think is going to happen to housing here? Yeah, unthinkable. Wait, these are this is these are thoughts that can't you know people can't think about. They just they seem like they just don't process. It's unthinkable, right? I can't. My mind just can't believe this is happening, but it's happening, guys. I mean, the thirty year is over seven percent right now. Check Zillow, Zillow mortgage rates. There's oh. It's already it's happening. There's no one's paying attention. Look at the one year. It it's already made new highs. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Despite your disbelief, the market is telling you these bonds. People are selling them. So what if there's a debt ceiling deal and they need to go raise money? So they're going to sell bonds, right? They're going to flood the market with bonds. Who's going to buy them? Why would you buy them? They'll have to create a panic to force you into them, right? Isn't that kind of the thinking? But what if, what if the one, you know, what if there is no panic and everyone's still euphoric? What do you think? The rates would just go, you know. So I think, I think we got an interesting month ahead of us on how this plays out. VIX uh, still closed above the downtrend line, uh, and actually it was creeping up yesterday. It was kind of creeping up. And again, that's what I'm saying. You got to watch the VIX build. If the VIX is building and the market's pumping, then it's going to, the mar that's, a top, that's top signs. That's a top sign. Now we did dump a little bit here, but, but again, you got to watch that. If it's building, then that's, that's divergence. Now the dollar index, I think uh, could be done this five, maybe it could go a little higher and then it should be pulling back. I think it's just, it's still got upside coming. Uh, and then I think uh, it will reverse after after this three wave move is done for another drop in Y before you get the ultimate move higher. So when this drop comes, perhaps, you know, we get commodities pump and gold and silver and crypto pumps. And perhaps the stock, some stocks support it. But we saw recently that stocks were selling off with the dollar going down because um, that wasn't the driving force anymore. It's changed. It's more like gold higher is the driver force of this market going down. Um, okay, so 
that's it for the market let's click through some stocks so again I like Devon energy down here at 38 it's not there yet Chevron I like it down here at 120 XOM down here at 9284 XLE down at not 6964 so energy's got a downside bore uh, down at five bucks area um, Halliburton uh, 1819 OIH 214, 194. So again, I'm just saying the energy still should go lower. And then, you know, looking at some other things. Uh, GDX could be in a buy area here. Uh, keep an eye on that. It's a risky move because it could still be in a massive corrective structure. Uh, well, you know, we have to keep keep an eye on it. It's you know, it is risky, and so is SIL is in this area that should bounce. Perhaps this is a risk off for the market as gold and silver pump. And then, um, yeah, Freeport, all these things gotta go lower. So I don't like any of anything else in this area commodities wise, discretionaries. I'm not a fan of the discretionaries, but they do, they do chop around and pump. Again, Crocs lower. I do like Nike here. Uh, you know, I'd like to buy it closer to earnings and play that long on the earnings play. So it's too early to buy it for me. Uh, I won't buy it yet. I'll wait and see where we're trading um, before earnings. If we are in this area going into earnings, I'll take a long play into earnings. If we happen to pump out of it, I won't play it into earnings. I'll just sidelines. If we're down here, I'll play it into earnings. Uh, if this low breaks at 82, it sets Nike up for catastrophe. Uh, down to the to 32.28, which I doubt. I mean, I just don't think it's going to happen. So that's why I think this is like good area to accumulate where I'm circling here. Um, Mattel's something to keep an eye on. It's the weak, very weak stock, you know. And here, where it marked the low, um, this was March 2020, and here it pivoted here at December 22, and re, you know, th this still has more downside to 11 bucks. Uh, this is showing me the market needs to go lower. The Dow is going to go lower. This, this is a, this, this, this should not rally given the sequence. So this, this is the worst of the worst, but when the worst of the worst bottoms here, then I believe the rest of the market has a high likelihood of, um, bouncing and, uh, for, for, you know, just, just like it may have done here. So this is, uh, something I watch kind of maybe back into a low in the indices so you know Chopolte I showed you danger it's a danger here I could go higher but I I think to me this this is very uh, unorthodox bottom it more than likely will fail and go lower uh, Lululemon is kind of the same thing should fail and go lower target is a lot of boycott talk, talk and target it looks like we did break this low. Uh, that's that means it's going to be lights out for Target. That's a so this is three waves down a connector that gets you to fifty two dollars. Uh, so I'm sure heads are going to roll there like they did at Budweiser uh, for whatever shenanigans are going on there. But I mean uh, the stock stock found a reason to sell off and it will go down now. Uh, uh, just looking at some of these. Yeah, Domino should continue lower. Wing stop, like I mentioned, I do like the dip buy in this. If we can get it here, uh, down in this area, it's struggling. It wants to come down here. Uh, I think that would negate a four. It would be another one, two. Uh, hoping to get that. And then um, let's go to Staples. Looks like uh, this is pulling back in this four. Now, this could be done the se sequence, too. It could be pulling back to fill this gap. We'll see. I do like the staples, KDP, I told you. Uh, now, it could still drop lower. Be careful in it. But, I, I mean, this, the count's the count. I mean, if you really look at the weekly stochastics on it, uh, here you have a massive RSI, uh, no divergence. You're almost as low as the grand super cycle drop. I mean, these are, they're, they're, you know, a lot of sellers have already sold here. There's a lot of capitulation. This is a long-term chart weekly. Um, the monthly is the same thing here. Uh, and then the daily showing some bullish divergence. So 
I, I, you know, you guys got to do what's best for you. I just can't see it having more a more catastrophic drop given where we are. But um, it looks good. And there's a bunch of others like that. Now, Costco pumped. It was interested. They they had a terrible uh, earnings report, but yet people again a lot of a lot of um, folks love this company so much that they just you know, and it's just a lot of denial um, about the consumer. Like it's like, oh, we broke down, now we broke up. So I want to really focus on a triangle pattern here. I do think uh, this could be done here, and this looks like three, and this pump looks like uh, some kind of consolidation so my guess is it's still um, trying to figure things out here I, I'm thinking or it, perhaps it could be one two so be very careful in this I wouldn't FOMO in on it I wouldn't FOMO in on this um, so let's see crypto Again, not interested in crypto until uh, GPDC hits uh, hits down here. ETH, just not interested in it. Um, the, but despite all the pumping, I want to see it go lower. Yeah. And then let's see financials. How's Schwab doing? Okay, so it, it negated our descending triangle. Now it could be a bigger one. Fine. Uh, if we look at this, one, two, three, four, five, three, uh, three. So this could be just a big, uh, a big uh, flat. We didn't break the low here, so it, we actually could still even be in four. You know, but um, or it's a different structure where it's a W X Y, which I think that's what I'll go with. Um, a different corrective structure. something like that so it says the financials could go up a little bit higher now this also could be um, 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 another type of pattern where you have like a, um, a, a B C D E and then down like I said just a different type of uh, tr descending triangle I think what's important is it stays below 5649 um, yeah, I I would say I would not I still would not take long trades in 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 these. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it needs a fifth wave. It just needs a fifth wave still. See, it's five. So to me, it needs a fifth wave. I wouldn't mess with it. Yeah, this one, I wouldn't mess with this one either. Yeah, I'd stay away from the banks. Let's look at the KRE. So we had this B wave. We're still in the B wave. We still need that drop capitulation wave, which could be coming at any moment. Okay, healthcare. Nothing I like. Um, then technology, of course, pumped a lot. So again, AI. Again, just by the chart. Again, I don't really, you know, care that much about the company, but the chart. The chart is telling you that it's coming up to third, this 38, but when it hits 38, it's at risk for a massive uh, drop. Uh, the entire uh, corrective structure could be done here. Um, we really need to see a, f a four and a five uh, to confirm the confirmed bottom, but it does seem like it wants to go to this area. Tesla um, pump in for no good reason. Um, I think people are just thinking it's gonna um, go to new highs like uh, Nvidia would. I mean, why not? It should, right? If everyone's FOMOing in. 
now here you have uh, this is clearly an impulse off the bottom right so we talk, I've been talking about that it should swing up one more time and perhaps that's probably what we're already starting to see here so we get this WXY connector here and then here you have this uh, A uh, B and now we're in C uh, so I would look for this and then you could look for this one two three four five something like that to 280 uh, so uh, so I would look at that the other, because it's five up here there's really not much um, you know that you could think of it is unless it's a much bigger uh, uh, X wave uh, down where you're still in uh, some kind of B wave um, and that would look like this uh, I would call it something like Now, wouldn't that be nasty? No one would, yeah, no one would see that coming. So you still got to be uh, careful of this pattern, and then the target would be 142, 125. Uh, so that's this is this is a more bearish target. Uh, we'll have to wait and see if this is what we get, and then buy against uh, 102 for this uh, C leg higher. Now, when the C legs finish, then all bets are off what it's going to do but perhaps this is uh this is the what we're looking for uh, i believe if it can break this high um well actually needs to break 217 maybe then uh it opens up 270. you know if i was if i was putting my money down given where the dollar is and everything else i would probably t say it's going to go lower and this this is probably the more probable path uh, AMD is almost at the final area uh, here at the 128. I still wouldn't short it, but since it's a race divergence, it's turned into a three-wave move, a corrective move. So now, now you have one, two, and now you're three. So we still need a four and a five with divergence to call it a low in. So this could still be corrective, and uh, if it was corrective, you know where where could it? go to uh, in its final swing lower uh, it would take you down to $18 and again I know it's unthinkable who would ever believe it but just tell you what the chart says if the, if this is a massive um, corrective structure but I do think uh, we need to see a we need to see it divert we need to see some divergence with a higher price to confirm now the bottom it's a race divergence now and it's turned into uh, a corrective structure where it's ultimately almost where you would want to sell it, but I would not recommend selling it. Uh, and then NVIDIA, again, hit the um, the expanded flat area literally to the penny. Isn't that something? Like to the penny. It, they, my expanded flat target. Uh, so, so it really needs to re retake the high and keep pushing. If it can't do that, it's definitely at risk. Uh, it's at risk to, to reverse. Uh, to reverse lower, uh, well, we be really interested to see how this plays out. Uh, I gave you guys Wolf. I said that this uh, should be uh, done now. Now it has like divergence, so it should be due for a pullback. But I do think uh, this has uh, FOMO potential uh, as this pulls back. Uh, it could just start roaring out of here. So I don't know, but again. This was way before Tesla's earnings, right? I mean, so um, uh, Apple still can't take this high now. If it could, it's got a big event coming up in July. I think June, early June, about its virtual reality headsets. Uh, could that be enough to give it uh, escape velocity out of this to new highs? Uh, it could be, if it if it's considered like the iPhone. If we look at this massive structure, I mean, it, it did break. It, it, it does show that it's um, it wants to go higher, right? So it's tough to say. Now you have this divergence uh, here. So it's still corrective until proven otherwise. But man, I would, you know, 50-50, I think it would tell us a lot about the overall stock market based on how Apple 
does if it reverses hard or blows out of this. Um, Amazon, again, I've, it's funny, everyone wants Amazon now. No one wanted Amazon in my update down here. Uh, so now it looks like it should be uh, finishing up this move. I don't think, it may not make it to this 128 area. Google, again, is struggling in this super short area. This was, I call it the, this was a sell. This was like a, um, a really strong area of resistance and it is struggling here. Uh, it does look like it's gonna reverse there. And then Microsoft uh, is just part of the, just the final pump, one, two, three, four, five. And let's take a look. You still barely have divergence on the 45 minute. And I said to keep an eye on that. You do, if you erase divergence, then uh, then I would definitely uh, change my outlook. But I mean, uh, Microsoft would have to break 349. It could turn into its own flat pattern uh, as well once it's next earnings, so not for a long time. So I, it just doesn't seem likely it's gonna get, you know, it's gonna struggle here, I think. Facebook, I told you about filling the gap, right? It's filling the gap. So it seems like it's gonna wanna go higher. Uh, I don't really trade Netflix, although it broke the new high here. This looks like, um, looks like this opened up Netflix. Uh, this is opening up Netflix here you you have no divergence so again it looks like uh, uh, Netflix uh, would be going should be going higher the 503 and fill that gap so I think that's a good long trade that the market hasn't caught on to yet or has some upside potential uh, we broke that high so I'm saying hedge your shorts guys you got to hedge your shorts this would be a good way to hedge your short if you look here now this looks like three up now we broke the high so it could still do uh, the expanded flat but it now that it broke the high I would expect it still to swing up so if it does an expanded flat pullback to 259 that's it's a really good buy opportunity uh, for, for a move higher so it is it is looks like three waves here so you got to be really careful that you don't get like a rug pull down like that so you can't just FOMO in, but, um, you know, yeah, I would be really careful. Actually, it looks like uh, five waves up here because you have this divergence on the daily and the four hour. So, yeah, it looks like um, the chances of the flat are, are, are pretty low. So it looks like to me you're, you're starting your, your next sequence up uh, here. So this should be pulling back. Maybe it pulls back to 352, 349, and then go long. So I think this is a good setup opportunity for a long position in technology if it dips back down to through this area that I have here. Um, but do what's best for you. Do what's best for you. We'll see uh, how that goes. But I do think um, it appears it seems to me that uh, we're going to see we're going to see the 500s in Netflix. Um, Adobe was another one uh, that broke this high. Again, here's a connector, so we should take another swing higher, and that brings us up to 446. It looks like it's just going to straight there. So all the, a lot of easy money is already over, um, but it will it will could get up to this area. Disney's struggling, and I've been showing this chart. It's just continuing the breakdown. Uh, and Airbnb, not here, there yet. Someone's asking me about Twilo. So Twilo, see that lower low, it more than likely will swing down one more time. DraftKings, again, still looking for uh, this C leg to finish. Now, it could be um, running flat, but now that you broke this low, it does look likely we're going to get something like that. And then that would be a buy opportunity. Probably fill this gap here at some point at 21.
and Stowe is just going to continue to be weak. Uh, Palantir mentioned that we would continue higher. We were doing that. How high? It looks like one more. It looks like we're almost done this five. Yeah, divergence. So one more. Maybe that's it. Um, the green stocks for solar looks like that first impulse is finished. And then um, in phase. And again, we could still be in this two wave, so it's tough. End phase is a, a tricky one, uh, but I don't like buying it until we get down to this area. RK struggling, right? Um, PDD, great reaction out of, out of earnings, so it does look like that's the low. Uh, now, this could still be a corrective structure for this entire move, but now it's a connector, so... I would put your stop loss at 59, and uh, but it seems like to me that correction's over. Uh, and now, of course, the Hang Seng could pull back. So if it does, um, what I'm trying to say is this: this would be uh, um, this would retest the lows if this low breaks. It would ret it would go back to retest $24. So you got to be smart. So if you're long this, you can stay long. I would recommend staying long. But if it were the reverse. You can see it will bring you back down to retest this low. Uh, so you just keep that in mind. Uh, and Baidu is still a little bit weak, weaker. And JD still needs to go down. And like I said, you know, and these stocks still aren't where we need to be. The Hang Seng K Web is still not where we need it to be. So you need to be careful if you're going to FOMO in China attack. Let's see, requested stocks you guys have. Um, this XELA uh, looks like a reverse split on us. Okay, so we made it to the short area on Fang, FNGU. So this, this is also showing us that the large cap stocks may uh, reverse. Three, connector three in the short area. Um, shorter time frame divergence, divergence erased. Yeah, very dangerous to be FOMO and in tech right now. But do what's best for you. Uh, this this was cra a crazy pump. But this is typically how a C leg and X leg end. They usually end like this because they're 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 typically the end of a three, a third wave. Okay, AHR finding some sellers. Let's look on the other side of the coin. The Mullins getting beat beat down. Again, the, our charts got reverse split on us. Um, yeah, damn, all these charts reverse split. I have to update all these charts. Okay, here's one. Let's go back to that one. BLRX. So somebody asked me about this one, I think. Yeah, let's see. So we had the five here, we had the two here, and then we had the massive pump. So I guess it worked out. Hopefully someone went, you know, whoever I answered this one for, hopefully they, they, they did, they made out on that. Elf. Yeah, it's still continuing to go higher. Zim, I said I, I, you have to stay away from it. It broke the low. It broke this pivot. It's it's just it's a dead chart now. It's 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 a it's it's a screwed up chart. Manchester United finishing the C. This played out exactly how we thought it would, and now we're in C. One more swing down, probably. 
I mean, that could be it too. That I mean, it it could be, but I think it's got more a little more to go. Wire. So I'll end it here. It was a long video because there was a lot to talk about. Um, so I think you know I haven't shorted the market in the last month. I've been very patient, waiting and waiting and waiting for the right opportunity. Not not um you know in Friday was that moment, and I will continue in this area. But if virgin if divergence gets a raise, then um, the setup's lost and needs to be reassessed. And there are stocks like Tesla, Netflix, and um, you know the others, Adobe. They show you technology still will go could go higher, but then there's stocks like Microsoft, maybe Apple. Of course, NVIDIA, AMD to show you know, things could be running out of steam. So mixed messages for sure out there. Um, one thing, bef yeah, I want to show you the SOXS. So um, SOXS had massive uh, capitulation here. So we're in this uh, third wave. It should be finishing up soon. And um, so the semiconductor industry uh, should be uh, pulling back, but then it does seem like it needs one more one more high. So that would be um, S O X L L, -L X. It's uh, three wave three three three, and we need a pullback and a high. So we may get that pullback, um, like I said, early in the week. Um, so let's uh, let's kind of draw that out. We could see the pullback early in the week. And then this. So keep that in mind. You could still see something like this in the semiconductor industry. And again, that's that will tech sells off, and then Tesla goes higher, Netflix goes to its high, everything kind of finishes up. Now, if that happens, the SOXS will pull back, pull up in four. Maybe it could get up to 14, 15 bucks, something like that. It would be a higher degree. Uh, and then you get this final move down for fit five. And what's really interesting is you have a massive impulse that would be finished there. And so where if let's say we end at nine, eight bucks, then this should pump all the way back up to 24 later. That would be a massive crash and the semis coming, but not quite yet. You see the swings just aren't there yet. So it does seem like the market wants to pull back and make and make another push higher in that and and that even matches the dollar even though you know i said watch gold but if you do really look at the dollar you know index you get this push up the market pulls back everything goes up and then a crash and that's kind of what you see you know with the spy where you where you pull back you pull back and up and perhaps the cues pull back go up but don't make a new high and the Dow Jones pulls back goes up and then crashes so you see I so that's why I think to have a crash just happen now doesn't seem likely given what I'm seeing in the internal structure of the market but there's a pullback coming it looks highly likely and then another bounce and some things will bounce more than others like I show you Netflix perhaps Nike some of these others and then when that's all lined up, you get a historic crash, like you like, um, like you will 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 read about and watch videos on for decades to come, and that's how this will end, and that's how this correction will finally end. All right, guys, that's all I've got today.